Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Stroke of Success uh, YouTube channel podcast. As you all know, the objective that I've had when I started the channel is to interview entrepreneurs with unique stories. Uh, the entrepreneurs are doing amazing stuff out there. And uh, today I finally got the opportunity to interview a local celebrity here in Orlando, Florida. Um, you know, this is a true story. I was having lunch at a Mexican restaurant called Rocco Tacos, and someone came right next to, uh, Ken was right the next table next to me, and Ken got up to the selfie with someone. And I'm like, you know what? That's the power of social media and good content. Ken, welcome to Stroke of Success, man. How you doing? Awesome, man. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Thank you for have, jumping on, man. So we have a, a mutual friend, Mark Schaffner. Oh, yeah. Love me some Mark. Yes. Mark was, uh, when I moved to Orlando three years ago, Mark said, hey, Look at this guy, Ken, he's doing amazing stuff. Call him, talk to him. And then we ran into this thing we did as a selfie world thing at the mall. You were on the panel and we, we we talked briefly. But yeah, Mark is a good guy doing good stuff over there. Ken, listen, I know we have limited time. Um, you know, I like to have a brief interview myself. So let's start with your, your upbringing. Where were you born and raised? Yeah, I was originally from Detroit, Michigan. So I grew okay. up right, right in the Motor City. And okay. uh, man, it was, it was a good upbringing, blue collar blue collar kind of thing and yeah. uh, moved to Orlando in late 2016 and then started over. So I've always been in real estate, uh, but started over in 2016. My wife and I were just looking for a new fresh start somewhere, better weather, more to do, better place to raise the kids. And so uh, it's been a really great, great go. 2016. Interesting. So you jumped in Orlando. What you, what type of job did you have back then? Uh, I was So when I was moved here, I was in real estate. So I've been in real estate since 2003. It's all I've ever done. So um, oh. Yeah, it was much more old school in, in Detroit. It was much more like door knocking, open houses, sphere, postcards, um, that kind of thing. And so, um, and then I moved here and, and found YouTube in 2018. And that's kind of been the been kind of all downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, um, you've been, you were working in the bubble, the first bubble. I was, man. Yeah, you I was survived there. it. <clears throat> I did. I was, um, you know, I was an investor and I was an appraiser at the time and um in like 05 06 07 and then all of a sudden the market crashed and then the state of michigan required that like appraisers had a four-year college degree which i did not have i still didn't don't have and um, so i couldn't be an appraiser anymore and then mortgages for flippers disappeared overnight because the market was melting and the subprime mortgages were gone and so i was like all right i'm gonna get into some sales and so um but i was still pretty young at the time and um, I was like 23 years old. I looked like I was 16 and uh, nobody was really wanting to work with me. So I started cold calling banks and I was like, hey, I know you have assets to sell here in, in Detroit because foreclosures are everywhere. Everywhere I look, there's homes getting foreclosed on and Detroit's like the capital of that. Us in Vegas, we have the most foreclosures in the country. And so, um, so you, you need somebody to sell them for you, I'm sure. And, uh, and, and so I got a couple of banks to give me a shot and started selling houses. And my first year, I think I sold 63 homes. The next year I sold a hundred and 104 homes. Um, and so it was a really interesting start to, to get started in the real estate space. That's, that's insane. Wow. First, first year. Yeah. First full year. Yeah. Wow. Um, let's fast forward to Orlando. Orlando you came here. Um, obviously you get to get familiar with the area, right? Yeah. It's pretty huge. I'm from South Florida, um, and South Florida compared to Central Florida, man, to, to, to you have, if you're uh, representing a buyer and selling houses, you're driving all over Lake yeah. Mary, Kissimmee, you know, Dr. Phillips, Lake Nona. Um, how long did it take you to get familiar with Orlando area? Man, it took me a while. I think, you know, it took me a good, um, I'm still learning places, man. I've been here, you know, almost, I guess, dang, it's going on seven years now, which flew by, but um, I'm still learning new areas, right? So I think, uh, you know, if anybody's moving to a new area, it's like the most best thing you can do, whether you're an agent or just by moving to an area is like, you know, drive the neighborhoods, eat out at different places as many times as you can, ask the locals what they like. And, and that's what I did. So I started off really for the YouTube channel, trying to figure out new areas, new builder models, new areas. And as I did that, uh, I got to know the area really well. And so became a bit of an expert in all things Orlando. That's amazing. What year was the YouTube thing came to your head? Uh, it was 2018. So so a friend of mine in Jacksonville was doing model home tours and um, not to any massive success, but he was like, listen, man, I do these builder tours on YouTube and every once in a while people call me. Mm -hmm. That's 
are you serious? Like, like actual buyers, not just like randoms. And he's like, no, I've closed a bunch of deals from YouTube. And I was like, I could do that. You know, I'm kind of sick of door knocking and open houses and all the other stuff. So I just literally just grabbed my cell phone and walked around to these different builders. And I said, Hey, do you mind if I do a video uh, for my YouTube channel on, on your model? And they didn't care at the time. It was not crazy busy. Like it was in 21 and 22. And so they were just like, yeah, please bring us buyers. So I would go home, take the footage, drop it into iMovie, edit it myself, use epidemic sound, grab some, you know, I, I, it was not good, you know, right. But if you can use an iPhone, you can use iMovie. It's really very easy and I uh, put it up. And so I did a hundred videos in a hundred days and um, somewhere along the way, the way somebody called me and like, Hey, I love this model that you did. Um, my wife and I were coming to town. We'd love for you to show us. You obviously know the area really well. Awesome. So I uh, put them under contract and I was like, all right, I'm onto something here. Um, and then, and then I, like, I, I just, the builder tours kind of thing was, was doing okay, but I just wasn't getting the views. I wasn't getting the searchability. And so, um, I just kind of was like, what, what are some things that people ask me all the time? And one of the things was like, Hey, you live in celebration, Florida. That's the town Disney built. Right. And I was like, yeah. And they would always have questions, you know, like, what does the HOA include? Does Disney still own it? And what are the housing like? And what are the schools like? And I was like, I should just do a video on this. So I did the, the top 10 things you don't know about celebration, Florida. And that video got like 40,000 views in 30 days, which to a new channel was amazing to me. And I started getting a bunch of calls from that video. And I'm like, all right, cool. So um, that's that's a good place to start. <laughs> so I started, I cut down to doing one video a week instead of, you know, multiple in a week. And I tried to get a little bit better at the editing. I started hiring an editor. It's been kind of a long journey of where we're at now, but we, we now we have a full-blown media company. So we've got writing staff, a short form editor, a long form editor. I've got um, people that help us with our newsletter. I've got people who help us with our socials. And um, so last year we helped 400 people buy or sell in Orlando. This year we'll help somewhere around 600 people um, buy or sell in Orlando. And a lot of that is just from our media company. It's a little slow down. You, you went from starting off second video to opening a media company. That's, that's a huge growth there. Um, before I get to that question, are you, do you follow Ryan Sternhan? Yeah, very much so. He, uh, his model is very similar to yours. I mean, on a larger scale, I mean, he's, yeah, he's, no, he's, a, he's way bigger than I am. And, and he's so a I TV just, star, right? I mean, I'm, uh, by the way, did you ever think about doing like real estate, real estate show for TV? You have a face for it, personality. Oh man, thank you. Uh, I have, but you know, it's, I had lunch with Ryan or dinner with Ryan, uh, maybe two months ago. And I was like, you know, how much of that actually brought you business and sex success. And he's like, honestly, it just made everything else I was doing better. You don't really get paid a ton to do it. It takes no. a lot of time, but yeah. it, you, know, you had a team built out. And so now I'm at the place where, you know, I would definitely consider it. I'm just so anti-drama though. Like in most of the stuff you see on Bravo, HGTV is a different story, but most of the stuff on Bravo and all, exactly. they, they want to see the drama. They want to see on Netflix selling sunset. Like mm -hmm. it's not about being a great agent. It's how much shit can I, you know, stir. And that's just not me. And so yes. I don't know, just keep growing out what we're doing here. Sure. That's awesome. Uh, Ryan Sternhan and uh, dinner. Wow. Big deal. But he's Ryan Sternhan, man. He's, he's moved big places now, you know, yes. uh, he's he's crazy, crazy, he's, crazy, crazy. He's the, he's the pace leader, man. So I'm just trying to keep yeah. up. That's awesome. Um, so second video when it was a hit, the people came, they saw the home, they made, made an offer with you. How soon after that, 2019, like what whole, like COVID came, 2020, COVID came. Yeah. How'd you do it in COVID? We, uh, it was amazing. Unfortunately, I always say like COVID was the, the most uh, sad and the most amazing thing that ever happened to me because all of a sudden we went from a thousand people moving to Orlando a week to 1500 people moving to Orlando a week. There were a lot more visitors, a lot more people like, you know, Florida was like open. So we had a lot of people that couldn't travel international chose Florida. And in that they chose Orlando. So our business doubled uh, through COVID and then we grew another 50% last year. So it's been, it's been amazing. Uh, and I think people were looking online, you know, we're like we were, because we were video first and buyers were like, totally fine with me just doing a video tour of a house and they would buy it uh, off the video tour. Mm -hmm. That, that was like a total game changer. It allowed us to get a lot of our time back. Wow. Well, wow. So COVID was a big thing for you. Yeah. Yeah. It I mean, for, game for you. Yeah, yeah. Obviously devastation. A lot of people passed away and, you know, a lot of people got sick and don't want to yeah. minimize that at all. But at the same time, it was for our business, 
uh, amazing. So when you came here, you were solo solo agent, just you. Okay. Yeah, I, um, wildly enough, I I mean, I really believed that I could just come in and take over, and so I took my assistant who was working with me up in Michigan, and I moved her down with us. And so, uh, I mean, you know, not in our house or anything, but you know, she lived she she lived in Orlando as well, and so she helped me kind of restart here. And uh, so very quickly, it was like, okay, I, I know I I know I want to grow a team again because I had a small team up in Michigan, not nearly as big as the one I have now, um, but but I knew I wanted to leverage and, and grow, you know, through other people and empowering other people. And so uh, that's what I'm doing now is I spend the most of my time finding talent, cultivating talent and doing content. That's like my day in and day out. Uh, rinse and repeat, right? Rinse and repeat. Yep. Simple. So, okay. So you just, were you near since then 2016. And then after that, what happened? So when does the, when did the media team start to develop? 2020, 21? Yeah, it was like, uh, so it went from me and a cell phone in 2018 to in 2019, I hired an editor, found her on Upwork. She lived in Nebraska and it was like 85 to $110 dollars a video. She would just edit them for me. So I'm now I'm out in the field, still using my cell phone, sending her the footage, but then now I got my time back. And that's what that 80 to hundred bucks got me was I could take my, take two hours of my time and, and get that back and be way more consistent with, with it. And then in 20. 19, I hired uh, late night, 2019, I hired a, a, a videographer and he's still with me today. We're actually going to shoot at 1130 today. So, um, uh, yeah, so he's still with me. And, and, uh, and then after that, it was last year, I hired, um, some writers for our website because I thought SEO for SEO is not something that a lot of people pay attention to, but one of the reasons why YouTube works so well is that it's SEO based. And I'm like, all right, so I understand that now, um, mm -hmm. go back and, and, and fill the white space where I feel like a lot of agents have now fell behind on, which is. SEO and Google. And so we built out a whole newsletter business where all things real estate theme parks and living in Orlando, we call it the Orlando Real. And um, people, we've got 26,000 people that subscribe to that newsletter. We put it out twice a week. And so we've got writers. So we did that last year. And then this year we hired a short form editor who who does all of my, um, my Instagram, TikTok, and now YouTube shorts. And so, um, yeah, so we've got, so short form, long form, three writers, marketing manager, that's kind of the, the marketing team. It's, it's an empire, man. You built an empire, Ken. Try, man. Dude, <laughs> I'm, I'm floored. I mean, amazing. We're the, by the way, we're the same age. So I started real estate same time you did, 2003 in Miami. I was 22, 23, you know, running around. i um, 41 now. So, I, but man, you have done an amazing job. Thank you so much. How Thank do you, are you, are you so you're married? I am. You have kids? Three. Okay. Wow. Okay. So how do you manage wife, three kids and an empire? So early on, I did a really poor job. And if I had to go back and, and do anything over again, I tell a lot of these young guys that have all this energy and just want to write, you know, grind, 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 grind. Um, if you, you know, you'll succeed at where you put your time. And so if you only want to succeed with work, go all in with work, but your marriage and your kids are going to suffer for it. Your body's going to suffer for it. Like I gained, I was really fat. Um, I, I, no, I, I lost like through COVID, by the way, I lost like 50 pounds on purpose. <laughs> I was working out in the garage every night, running, eating well. And, um, so that was really huge, but, but I had let everything else go. Um, thankfully I'm still married. We've got an amazing relationship now, but it was kind of like, it was touch and go because I just wasn't spending the right amount of time with my kids, with my wife. Um, I was just all on business. And so, yeah, thankfully we've, we've crushed it and, and we've, we've killed it on, on the business side and. We're still just, I still feel like we're just getting started, um, awesome. but you know, you, you know, you succeed with where you spend time. So for me, it's, you know, the way we figured it out with my wife, we did date nights again. I'm dating my wife. We're going every Friday night. We're going somewhere, dinner, whatever it is, just she and I, no kids. Um, but then I also try to spend at least one, some time one-on-one -on -one with each of my kids every week. Um, so like my son and I are going golfing this Saturday next week, my daughter and I will go do something the other week, my, my next daughter will do something. So I'm constantly pouring into those relationships because, man, what do we, you know, YouTube's cool. Sales are cool. Money's cool. Trips are cool, but like relationships and your body are, are really all that matter. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's a really good point. Um, wow. Damn, heavy, heavy stuff. Uh, question. What's your daily habits routine for success, right? Some people told me, Hey, I prepare for my week on a Sunday night. Some say, no, I do the night before. Some let's say I wake up five o'clock in the morning and meditate, uh, cold plunge outside. What's your routine? 
Yeah, I, I just, I think it's, um, again, going back to the consistency piece. So like I eat the same thing almost every day. So like I, I have Starbucks oatmeal in the morning and a black coffee. And I know exactly where my macros sit with that. I have Chipotle almost every day for lunch. If I'm not, I'm eating a salad. I just do that every single day. And then for dinner, it's a little bit, you know, whatever I want, but um, so that's every single day. But I'm, in terms of like habits beyond that for content creation, um, tomorrow I've got a really big day. Um, I've got uh, some really big meetings, but usually Thursdays are my content day. And I, this is the first time that I've had to put my content day on Wednesday in a very long time. But um, almost every single Thursday I wake up get the kids to school, come to the studio, I'll shoot four or five to six shorts. So it's just like, Hey, here's what's going on in the news in Orlando. Here's what's going on, blah, blah, blah. And um, I'm very like, you know, we, we get that off to the editor as quick as possible. Then midday on Thursday, I'm going out with my long form videographer and we're doing whatever it is for the YouTube channel for the week. Then on Thursday nights, I come back to the studio, which is here. And from seven to 8 PM, we do a YouTube live. And so that's my Thursday. I almost never miss again. I moved it to Wednesday because I've got something going on today, but um, that's it. Like in terms of like, whatever it is you want to do, like spending time and being really consistent are, are massive keys. And so like many people will try YouTube and they fail because they just try it. Hey, I put out five videos. I didn't get a lead. Well, you probably still suck at it. Right. I mean, like, after, that's okay. That's okay. It's okay. To that's so it's, so it's actually part of the process and it's actually getting really comfortable with that. Like they're like, Oh, I don't like how I look on camera. You know what, how you look on camera is how you look in real life. So you're either going to change how you look like I did. I lost a bunch of weight because I was like looking at myself on camera and like, oh man, you're, you're fat. Um, or you're just going to get used to it and you keep moving forward. But you know, don't, it's, it's the excuses that people tell themselves uh, that are kind of sad, but massively consistent in, in everything that we do. That's really important. Um, I could go over my content schedule and a bunch of other stuff. And basically what I do is I look at my calendar and I say, what's most important to me? It's eating right, getting in workout and my family. So that goes on my calendar for the week first, then it's content, then it's my team stuff. And um, that all kind of built out my calendar and I work off of that. Insane. Visualization, do you have affirmations? You do law of attraction uh, techniques, meditation? Not really, man. Um, I just practice gratitude. That's I think, it. Um, you know, every day it's, you know, there's every time something big comes up in my life where I'm like, man, this is going to rock me or this is a, this is a huge deal. Like I'll slow down and say like, what is going right though? Like what, um, you know, what, it, I, I, yeah, exactly. Just, just slow down for a minute. Give me two or three things that are going right that I can be really grateful for. I've got a beautiful wife. I'm healthy. I've got a team that loves me. I've got, you know, all of these different great things. Okay, great. So practicing gratitude and it makes everything else easier. That's so, that's, so yeah, Danny Morrell, heard of him? Danny He's, Morrell? Yes, he used, to be a huge, he used to be a broker on social media. He sold his brokerage. Now he's a monk. He does like self-development stuff. He oh, was wow. a huge real estate agent in California and, and um, back to 17, 18 on YouTube. But he didn't do tours. He did more like uh, motivation stuff, right? And, and so um, he talks about something that every day you do a 10, uh, 10 things that you're grateful for. Mm. And try to make it non-material. Uh, Mm -hmm. About money, not about your car, not your house, not the clothes, something, and I try something, something different every single day. And I started to do that, Ken. Man, I'm telling you what, man, my 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 thought process started to flip. Yeah. You know, things happen, and sometimes good things happen. Your ego goes over here. Um, which I'll, you answer my next question: How are you so hu uh, humble? So I'll give you an example, and I'm no names. I'm Lake No, and I'm in Laurier Park. I have an agent, team leader. He's huge here. But man, the guy's ego is so big. I went into him at a birthday party and I went up to him to talk to him. He's like, yeah, I'll talk to you later. And I'm like, man, you're, you're a real estate agent and I get it, the success you have, but you're not Johnny Depp, right? I mean, I mean, you have to think about him. Johnny Depp probably would be more right, friendly. Right, right. You know, but I, you know, and I see you and the success you have and I think you're way past him. You're so humble. And I, so I guess the, the gratitude is a key component to that. Yeah, I think so, man. I, I got really clear early on. Um, I don't save lives for a living. Like, I, have, I, have a, I have a friend of mine, a uh, brilliant surgeon. He's a plastic surgeon. He, he specializes in creating and putting on ears for kids wow. that are born with no ears. Like, that's some badass shit. And, and I'm not that, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm not bringing sight to the blind and, and giving hearing to the deaf. Like, we sell real estate. You know, okay. and it's cool. And I'm glad I'm massively grateful for all the success we've had, but it's real estate. It's not, it's not life-changing. So 
Um, yeah, man, I think that's just staying grounded in that knowing, you know, there's a lot more people doing a lot more cool stuff than I am. Um, and I've never arrived. Like, that's the thing I think that maybe motivates me and you is just like, whatever success you have is cool, but it's, that's the yesterday now. And so what are you going to do in the future? That's going to be uh, worthy of your talents and, uh, and the gifts that you've been given. Yeah. yeah that's a good point. Before we wrap, wrap up, um, I'm a new agent on the market. I want to be, um, I look up to Ken. I want to be like Ken. I want to make my business bl uh, blow up. Do I like, like, have a phone? But now they have these little kick kits in Walmart that's selling lights and this and all that. Yeah. What do I do starting off on a budget? I think, um, you know, on a budget, I would say what's most, um, you know, figuring out who you are first, right? So is it, are you a content creator or are you a networker or are you a, a cold caller or are you, like, I've got friends of mine that are remarkable cold callers and they are, and they're terrible on video, right? So being really self-aware is, is I think a very important part. So say, say video is where you want to start though. I would say figuring out who your ideal client is and creating content for them and having it be really almost nothing about you because you'll notice that a lot of realtors will get started on YouTube and it's like, you know, Hey, I'm Johnny Mac from eXp Realty and I'm the best realtor in Lake Nona. And so if you want to buy a house, make sure you call me. And it's just like, it's all about them. Like nobody, nobody cares about you. <laughs> they don't, they're in it for them. What can, what can you teach them that they don't know already? What can you show them that entertains them? What, what kind of feeling can you elicit out of your videos? And that's what you should be focused on. And so say you're looking for like, you want to focus on relocation. That's what we do. Typically people that are moving to the areas. I'm very, very clear who my video is for. And I shoot videos for them. I don't start even the video out with like, Hey, this is Ken Posick today. We're getting into, it's just literally like, if you're thinking about moving to Orlando, Florida, there's three things that you have to know. And one is going to change the way that you look about our area. Stay tuned. And then you get into it and it's just like, click, click, click. And then once I've earned the view, once I, once I know for sure that I've delivered some value at the end, I'm like, Hey, by the way, if you got any value from this video and you're thinking about moving here, I'd love to be your real estate resource of choice. Reach out to me. Right. That's after they've already gotten seven or eight minutes of, of hopeful, hopefully value. And, uh, and that's the way that I look at it. So um, that those are the most important things to start. But in terms of like gear, like your cell phone's fine. Um, if you're outside, make sure you like, you know, make sure like good video is made by good audio. So although your cell phones, your cell phone's fine, this one's fine. Um, they sound really, really good when there's no wind. If there's wind, you'll lose the audio. It'll sound like garbage. So making sure you're really cognizant of like, how does that sound? There's some plugins that you can add mics and stuff, but you don't need all of that to get started. And then the next thing is just like analyze and improve. You do a video, you put it up. How did it do? What would you have changed? What would you do better next time? And then it's just the 1% rule, just getting 1% better every, every video, every time. Um, and now we've done, you know, my team and I, we put up 505 videos as of this morning on YouTube and we're getting pretty good. Ken, uh, last question. Your, your enunciation, your command of the language is like, professional TV, Bravo, Star, Eden Network, whatever you want to call it. Um, did you come naturally to you? Or did you get some lessons? As I know there's um, roadmasters out there for speech, um, better speech. Um, what's what, any, any? Um, I've taught a lot. Right? So like I, I, I was not this way forever. I, I do read a lot. Um, and so I feel like your, your language gets better the more you read. Um, you hear different words or different vernacular and that kind of thing. Um, it definitely helps that way. Uh, but I teach a lot. I get in front of a lot of people all the time. And so it's like teaching team building, teaching a database, teaching YouTube, teaching whatever pro profit and loss statements. Like I don't care. Um, and through teaching, you get better at a lot of things. You get better at the content you're teaching, but then it also gives you more confidence. Uh, it allows you to command a room a little bit more. If people are falling asleep, you start kind of figuring out where do I need to put jokes? Where do I have like a, a dramatic pause? Um, all of these things are just I've just done it so much now. Um, and so, but, but then at the same time, I've given back a lot in that. And so I do these zoom calls. I do, you know, I teach now all over the country from via zoom, right. Or in person and, um, and doing that, uh, you know, just time on task over time, you just start to get better. Awesome. Ken, uh, thank you so much for your time. Good, good information. Next time we'll do a part two to this. We'll do it in person at studio. I'm trying yeah. to make a studio in my office here. What you have a studio there? Uh, yeah, we got a full studio here, man. So well, we, come on we should, out. We 
we should do that. Sounds good. Uh, face to face. Um, Ken, appreciate you. You're a busy man. You're humble. Um, you inspired me, man. Uh, Edison Moreno, a uh, good friend of mine, owns more homes than uh, uh, Metro West. He is a big fan of yours. Always talks about you. And so, you know, we appreciate what you're doing for us here in Orlando. Good work, man. Thanks so much, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye, Ken.